The America I grew up in is gone, and nobody cares. The, 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 the concept of America, of personal liberties, a vanguard for personal freedom, lost. Since, the, since from the 50s, 60s, it's been a downhill chase, chasing democracy rather than liberty. Big difference. We have been now for a couple generations through the public education system and through the media and just the spirit of the age. We have been brainwashed. Their goal is to deceive and your goal is to not be drawn in by it. The system, the news media, the society in general is increasingly corrupt. It's a shock to realize as we went towards this major election how the media went out of its way to, in, to employ deceit regarding the candidates, to hide the truth that was inconvenient for them. Our media, it's the pawn of the special power groups. You find the same news stories are pushed and the same news stories are spiked by the mainline media and you suddenly realize there's something going on that uh, most people in public life recognize it's not just a bias, it's more sinister than that. No free society can survive without a free press in place. I absolutely believe that. The founders believed it. Journalists don't practice that. It's been abandoned. That's, that, that's, that's legacy now. It's gone. Okay, so does that mean free society is gone. Those are the real problems we're facing. We're facing it at the political level. At the level up above that, we're coming into a terrific economic storm. The biggest issue that I see and that I've been talking about for 25 years on the show is the decay of constitutional rights and the understanding of the American people, how these rights came to be and why they're very important. There is a whole series of new rights coming along and the new rights trump the old rights. That's what we're being told. And the Supreme Court isn't necessarily defending the old rights, you know. And they say, well, yes, you have the right to freedom of religion, comma, but then you realize that the rights they just told you that you have, you don't have anymore. On uh, December 31st of 2012, the National Defense Authorization Act was signed by the president, which essentially eliminated the Bill of Rights. Most Americans don't even realize that. The astonishing thing isn't just what's happening, the astonishing thing is that nobody cares. Nobody even notices. And so I stand back stunned, because it used to be what we were founded for um, was liberty and freedom, not democracy. Democracy is recognized as an unstable form of government. That's why our founders gave us a republic, not a democracy in the true sense of the term. Government can be the most potent and powerful force on earth if it's unrestrained, especially government that doesn't have any accountability to its people. Now, when you, when you combine all that with databases and technology that could really indeed create a Big Brother-style government. The kind of technology we've been talking about are empowering technologies. The, the, the ability of, of personal identity uh, to, as, a, as a backbone to our financial system, the ability to uh, the, the, the tools we're giving law enforcement, uh, the, the visibility we're giving to our, our, our society, to those that are in power is phenomenal. And uh, there's no place to hide, so to speak. Technology is changing today's culture at such a rapid pace. When we're gonna wake up and say, we didn't realize things were gonna get to where they are now. Look at those technologies fr from the point of view as the erosion of our personal liberties. We're, moving, we're, we're empowering people in power to have more power over our lives, every detail, financially and medically and every other way. And so everybody is more concerned about their personal comfort and security. They have no grasp or concern for the freedoms that we used to hold so dear. And so we've gravitated into the direction of being a police state. And people are gleefully from both the right and the left cheering it on. Yeah, okay, you may get this for your own particular cause right now, but you don't understand, you've destroyed a very important pillar uh, of our system. Recently, we've, we've heard all kinds of stories about the National Security Agency and all the ways that they're listening to us and eavesdropping on us. They're reading the mail of not just Americans, everybody in the world. That's offensive to a lot of people. Why is this suddenly being leaked out to everybody. These were deep, dark secrets that only, you know, really well-informed people knew about. And the thing that's amazing about that is how few people care. 
the, the trend is much, much worse. Uh, looking into the future and the path that's been laid out is all about empowering government. At the end of the day, that's what it's about. Government has a vested interest in expanding its authority. Our founding fathers knew this. Their number one goal was placing all kinds of checks and balances on government because of its, of its natural instinct to grow and expand and to impose its will on the people. Their idea was that the people are sovereign. We've always taken pride in what we call separation of powers. And uh, that's all nonsense today. We have an executive branch that totally ignores the legislative, that totally ignores the judiciary, that ignores the Constitution, which was our pillar. They have their own agenda. They go out there and they deliberately lie. They deliberately deceive. The news media is consistently the most dishonest all the way across. We see some institutional problems in the media. It's not doing the job that it was intended to do. I find the news media to be an extremely powerful tool that can be used by powerful people. People believe what they see, and a lot of people buy into it. A lot of people don't question. Today, we think of the press as hostile to Christianity, and it, and it, it definitely is. And that's when we began to see the, the press really go off the rails in America. It became about um, activism masquerading as journalism, ideological activism, political activism, uh, pushing a, a worldview that was not the worldview of e either the population of the United States at that time or the worldview of the press for the previous 220 years uh, in America. Why did the founders see the free press as such a critical institution for a free society? You needed to have two things for a self-governing society. You needed to have a moral population of people who were capable of self-government because they understood the difference between right and wrong. You also needed to have an informed public you can't have dummies governing themselves. They, they had a moral base to their society, that was clear. Uh, they had a, you know, the people operated under a Christian worldview, a Judeo-Christian worldview that uh, lends itself to self-government. And that's the kind of society they wanted to produce in America and did. The darkness that's engulfing America is astonishing. The corruption in America at all levels is so extensive, it baffles me to just watch the changes of the last few decades. So, so as you stand back and look at America, you suddenly realize that we have gone to some lengths to outlaw God. Well, the biggest issue is a spiritual issue, but that can't be addressed from a political area. Um, a friend of mine, Dave McIlvaney, said that we really don't have any political solutions today that are going to work. Go back to the foundation as much as you can. Um, the, the Latin of ad fontes, go back to the fountainhead. How, how do you begin fresh? If you want to see the macro culture changed, where does it begin? With public policy decisions? Or does it begin with micro-level decisions? Maybe that is um, on your knees in repentance. Maybe that is creating a family culture that has a deep level of love and respect for each other. We don't raise children to govern themselves anymore. And that's a, disaster, a recipe for disaster in the future. Self-government is having a society of people, you know, that ha no right from wrong, we don't consider that anymore. You can get people that have been conditioned by their culture or their education so completely that they are totally blind to the realities that they need to deal with. Um, I think that's, that's one of the challenges that the church has, is getting people to understand the Bible because they've been so conditioned by humanism, by the culture, that they are literally blinded to the possibilities. So we need to get informed. We need to understand. We, we should be like the sons of Issachar who understood the times and knew what their country had to do.
As things get darker, as things get worse, it's going to be increasingly incumbent upon each of us, first of all, to determine who we can trust, to build our personal network and find ways to stay in communication with those that we trust. Uh, we won't make it alone. We're going to have to be partners. Wow. Where are the Christians? Where are they in the disseminating of information and using technology to foster and spread the gospel? They're nowhere. So what can, what can you do? What can we do as Christians? We can, we can engage just as we're commanded to by our Lord and Savior to, to you know, occupy until he returns. We've also developed a whole new approach to being an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus Christ is not a concept uh, or a, a tradition that's more useful. You know, it's, he's a live person that is shortly going to take his throne that was uh, promised to him before the foundation of the world. And so that's, we, we, it's that reality that we focus on. So we've created an entity called the Koinea Institute. Uh, it, there are thousands of people in hundreds of countries right now learning the Bible on the internet through interactive, through virtual classrooms. And we're very non-denominational but very fundamental. And uh, we've developed some materials that have a surprising acceptance worldwide. That's one of the reasons why that we've been so aggressive in trying to build a worldwide international internet-based fellowship where the truth can be quickly indexed and made available to the membership. Join us because there are some guerrilla warriors out there in journalism today, like me and my team, uh, that are pursuing this. The most important part is to remember that we do what we're called to do because of these times, which is to evangelize, to tell people about Christ. You do have to keep your reference points. Remember that Paul keeps stressing, faith, faith, faith. In the book of Revelation, when things get really bad, it says here is a call for the faith and the endurance of the saints. Those are your reference points that let you understand who God is, where we fit in, where we came from, where we're going, and that God is still supervising this whole process. And Christians need to remember, the Bible is a training manual. It is a manual to action, a manual for life. So that's where you need to be encouraged, and we need to encourage each other, because the time of small people doing big things is almost upon us, and we can do it because of the infilling of the Holy Spirit that we have. He's doing it, working in us. That means we have the power to fix things through prayer, and real prayer, with humility and all of the things that he talks about. That idea of, of shrinking macro to micro and looking for solutions at the smallest level rather than looking for them from outside levels, um, I think makes a lot of sense. I think it makes a lot of sense. So if it's the church that needs cleaning up, where do you start? You start in the family. If, if, it's, if it's the state that needs cleaning up, where do you start? You start in the family. If it's a nation that needs cleaning up, where do you start? You start in the family. If we love our nation, which a lot of us do, we love our country, we want to see it fixed, that's the hope that we have. It's the only hope. Believe me. The politicians are not going to fix it. We're not going to suddenly see all the cultural institutions in America, you know, turned right side up all of a sudden. That doesn't mean we stop working toward that either. If we're going to heal the nation, it's going to be up to believers doing what God commanded them to do.